Hey folks, welcome to day one of this week's uh, Pastor's Devotional, um, and I have a little confession to make to uh, start this time. I was uh, talking to a couple people this weekend actually, and they were saying how much they um, enjoyed these devotionals, and, and I just have to tell you, one of the ways that I've been able to do these devotionals um, over the summer is that I haven't been preaching um, much over the summer, and so that's about 10 hours of my week in terms of uh, the research and crafting the sermon and practicing the practicing the sermon preaching the sermon and so now that I'm going to go back to uh, preaching um, almost every week um, I've been thinking about how is it that I find this um, extra time um, because I, I wasn't using that time to be preaching I had time to do these devotionals and and so um, what, what I've decided is that most often the devotionals are going to follow the sermon I preach. So preach a sermon on Sunday and then the devotionals for the next week will sort of riff off of that. So what are passages that I thought about using and didn't? What are other ways of looking at this? Um, and that that would form the uh, bulk of the devotionals um, going forward. So, so that's what I'm going to be doing. Um, and just wanted to share that with you this week. Um, I, I, so I didn't preach, uh, uh yesterday, um, but I wanted to share with you some reflections in scripture and devotion about some of the work I am doing this week on behalf of the larger church. I'm on the board of ordained ministry, um, which is our, our, uh, judicatory board that, um, uh, certifies folks for, um, ordination to become pastors. My particular job on that for the last nine years is I have been leading the residency program. The residency program is, is a two to three year process of, of further training for pastors. And so you might say that, that I'm, uh, I lead the committee that is responsible for training our new pastors. This week, I'm actually on a Zoom call. We have our first one with a new group of pastors, um, and I'm teaching it. So what I'm going to do is to share with you the scriptural reflections on what I am leading those pastors, about 20 new pastors, through um, this week. So um, there's 10 different segments. Uh, we'll do these over the course of uh, this uh, this week and maybe into next. So the first one, and, and what these are, are, are these are sort of laying foundations of pastoral work. So number one, the, the first foundation of pastoral work that I show, share with our folks is knowing God. Um, and so we talk with them about their spiritual life and, and keeping connected to God. Um, and that, you know, if, if we don't have a deep relationship with God, then how can we help other people connect to God? And so we share a lot of that kind of information. The scripture I want to share with you is from uh, 1 Thessalonians. 1 Thessalonians, way back in, in um, your New Testament, almost to the end. I'll give you a second to find it. Uh, 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 12. But we appeal to you, brothers and sisters, to respect those who labor among you and have charge of you in the Lord and admonish you. Esteem them very highly in love because of their work. Be at peace among yourselves, and we urge you, beloved, to admonish the idlers, encourage the faint-hearted, help the weak, be patient with all of them. See that none of you repays evil for evil, but always seek to do good to one another and to all. Rejoice always, pray without ceasing, give thanks to all circumstances, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. Do not quench the spirit. Do not despise the words of prophets, but test everything. Hold fast to what is good. Abstain from every evil. And what I want to focus on is verse 17, short and sweet. One of the shortest verses in the entire Bible. Pray without ceasing. Now, what what I tell these new pastors um, and is the same thing that that I would tell you. I hear this um, th this verse um, used so often by people to explain their prayer life. Uh, so you can say, what is what is your what's your prayer life like? Um, 
and they might say, well, First Thessalonians 5.17, I pray without ceasing. Uh, and, and what they're saying, it, one, one way of, of talking about that, what they're saying is that they're, all, they're praying all the time. Um, I, I want to caution us um, against misinterpreting what that prayer might be. I think too often, pray without ceasing, which is a way of saying, I don't really do devotions. I don't really have a scheduled time. I don't really kind of carve extra time out. I just pray all the time. Uh, and really what those folks are saying is that they're offering up their prayers of conscience and convenience. So when something happens and they need pray, they, prayer, they pray. Or when they think about God or they think about some situation, they pray. That, that's great. But what happens when you don't need it for four days in a row? What happens when you forget who God is? You sort of lose track of that. Um, what we have to be careful of is that when we pray without ceasing, that, it, that it's not a prayer of conscience and convenience as if only when I think about it. And this is why I always encourage folks to, to have a time, dedicated, devoted time that is set aside. Can you pray all throughout the day? You see a car accident, pray. You see a homeless person, pray. You see fire in the wilderness, pray. You see something on the news, pray. Absolutely. But again, those are conscience and convenience. When it comes in your conscience, you pray about it. What about the kind of prayer that takes us out of our conscience and puts us into God's conscience? I'm really interested in that kind of prayer. See, what, what I think we ought to do is we ought to be posturing ourselves so that we can understand and, and see and hear and realize when it is that God is active in our lives. That we should get outside of ourselves so that we might delve more deeply into God. I always talk uh, about us... Um, what we ought to do is, is we ought to be training to be world-class disciples, right? And we ought to be training in the same class, every, in the same way that everyone who is world-class, a world-class athlete, a world-class artist, a world-class musician, constantly they're, they're training. Not just when they think about it, not just, you know, an athlete wouldn't say, well, I'm training all day. The athlete sets time aside. The musician wouldn't say, well, I'm training without ceasing. Even though she or he may be thinking about the music, there's specific time set aside, disciplined to do the work. And so knowing God, praying without ceasing, pray all the time, pray in all kinds of situations, yes. And that's praying as the world is coming. As we're experiencing the world, we're praying. What I'd encourage you also to do is to develop a time in which you might step out of that world. And you might solely have a time in which you're trying to step into the mind, the heart, the world of God. And to know God in that place. So I give you that encouragement um, on this day um, as we think about what it means to be uh, to pray without ceasing. The other thing I want to uh, share with you, you hopefully you have these prayer calendars, um, and I want us to uh, focus on these a little bit during these devotional times. Um, there's a calendar in, in, uh, that we produce every month. Um, this month, the calendar is praying for people in our congregation, our families, people we know of that are... Um, frontline workers that have been frontline workers during this pandemic. They've had to leave the house every day to, to go to work. Um, and uh, some of them in very dangerous places, but all of them putting themselves at danger for catching um, COVID. So want to uh, lift up the folks today to be praying for Samantha Shook and April Olson, who are both 911 operators, critical, critical folks to um, our world. And uh, they don't get to stay home and work from home. Uh, they're on the front lines. And so we're praying for them on this day. God bless you. Have a great day.